<clears throat> where you can you think about the apps you commonly use on your phone. You use every single app has at least one list. The call, history screen, and contacts app, and your favorite social media app all in the display list of data as shown in the screenshot below. Some of these apps display simple lists of words or phrases, while others display more complex items, such as cards that include text and images. No matter what the content is, displaying a list of data is one of the most common uh, user eyes tasks in Android. <clears throat> to help you build apps with lists, Android provides Recycler View. Recycler View has, is designed to be very efficient even with large lists by reusing or recycling the views that have scrolled off the screen. When a list item is scrolled off the screen, Recycler View reuses the list for the next list item <clears throat> to be displayed. That means that the item is filled with new content that scrolls on the screen. The Recycler View behavior takes a lot of processing time and this helps lists scroll more smoothly. In the sequence shown below, you can see that one view has been filled with data, A, B, C. After the view scrolls off the screen, the recycler view reuses the view for new data, X, Y, Z. <clears throat> In this code lab, you will build Affirmations app. Affirmations are a simple app that displays 10 positive affirmations as text in a scrolling list. Then, in the follow-up code lab, you will take a step further, add an inspiring image to each affirmation and polish the user interface prereqs. <clears throat> okay, add string resources to find XML layouts, indexing classes and inheritance in Kotlin, including abstract classes, inherit from existing class overridus methods. Use the documentation on the developer.android.com for classes provided by the Android framework. What you'll learn, how to use a recycler view to display a list of data, how to organize your code into packages, how to use adapters with recycler view to customize how the individual list items look. <clears throat> what you'll build, an app that displays a list of affirmation strings using recycler view, what you will need, a computer with Android Studio 4.1 or higher. Creating the project, create an empty activity project. All right, enter affirmations is the app name. Okay. Project. Okay. <clears throat> Setting up the list of data. The next step in the creating affirmations app is to add resources. You add the following to your project, a string resource to display as affirmations in the app, a source of data to provide a list of affirmations to your app. Note, in most production Android projects, you would retrieve the affirmation data from the database or from a server. Okay. Networking and databases are beyond the scope of this code lab. You will use a list of affirmation strings to find inside the app. Add affirmation strings. So go to the strings XML file. In the strings XML, add the following affirmations as string resources. Name them affirmation one, two, so on and so forth. Okay. okay. So, the project view, app sources, um, resources, values, 
strings. Okay. Information one. <clears throat> All right. So you have that looks the right way. Should look like this. Affirmation one. Is that right? Affirmation or affirmations? Affirmation. Now that you have added the string resources, you can reference them in your code as resource.string about affirmation one or resource.string about affirmation two. Thank you. 
<laughs> Pretty new package. <clears throat> Organize your code logically helps you and other developers understand, maintain, and extend it. In the same way, you can organize paperwork into files or folders. You can organize your code into files or folders. There's a package. Android Studio, the project window, Android. Take a look at your new projects under the app, Java, Affirmations app. They should look similar to a screenshot below. But you have three packages, one for your code and two for test files. <clears throat> Notice that the name of the package consists of several words separated by the period. There are two ways in which you can make close of packages. Create different packages for different parts of your code. For example, developers will often separate classes that work with data and classes that build the user interface to different packages. Use code from other packages in your code. In order to use code, the classes from other packages, you need to define them in your build system dependencies. It's also standard practice to import them in your code so that you can use the shortened name. For example, text view instead of the fully qualified name. Example, android.widget.textview. Uh, android for example, you already have used the import statement for the classes, such as square root import .math .square root and view import android.view.view. <clears throat> in the Affirmations app, in addition to importing Kotlin and Android and Kotlin classes, you will also organize your app into several packages. Even when you don't have a lot of classes for your app, it is good practice to use packages to group classes by functionality. <clears throat> Naming packages. A package name can be anything, as long as it is globally unique. No other published package anywhere can have the same name, because there are very large numbers of packages, and coming up with random, unique names is hard. Programmers use convention to make it easier to create and understand package names. The package name is usually structured from general to specific, with each part of the name in lowercase letters separated by a period. Important, that period is just part of the name. It does not indicate a hierarchy of code or a mandate or mandate a folder structure. Because the internet domains are globally unique and it is it is a common convention to use a domain usually yours or the domain of your business as the first part of the name you can choose the names of the packages to indicate what's inside the package and how the packages are related to each other for code examples like this one com.example followed by the name of the app is commonly used here are some examples of predefined package names and their contents Kotlin.math, math, math, health, functions and constants, Android.widgets, views such as text view. Note, while the names of the packages and their arrangement in the Android project window of Android Studio as a hierarchy folders appear as a hierarchy, there is no actual hierarchy in the executable code. Just like the numbering systems of a library, categories, and organized books, they are still all on the same shelf. You can take them out of anywhere. <clears throat> Create a package in Android Studio in the project pane. Right click the app Java com affirmations and select a new package. Okay. In the new package pop up, notice the suggested package name prefix. While the package name do not create a hierarchy of packages, we're using parts of the names is used to indicate a relationship of organization of the content. All right. In the pop-up, append model to the end of the suggested package name. Developers often use model as the package name for classes that model or represent the data. Um, com.example.affirmations.model. Mine will be different. Noon, Java, okay. Affirmations, new package. Affirmations dot 
model. Creates a new package under the <clears throat> um, examples uh, affirmations. Or this new package will contain any data related content. Create the Affirmations data class. In this task, you'll create a class called Affirmation. An object instance of Affirmation represents one affirmation and contains the resource ID of the string with the affirmation. Right click on the com example affirmation model package. Okay. Select the new Kotlin class file. In the pop up, uh, enter affirmation as the name of the file. <clears throat> Make affirmation a data class by adding the data keyword before the class definition. This leaves you with an error because data classes must have at least one property defined. When you create an instance of affirmation, you need to pass the resource ID for the affirmation string. The resource ID is an integer. Add a val integer parameter called string resource ID to the constructor of affirmation class. This gets rid of the error. Val string resource ID of type int. <clears throat> string resource ID. Okay. Type in. Create a class to be a data source. Data displayed in your app may come from different sources. Within your app project or from an external source that requires connecting to the internet to download data. As a result, data may not be in the exact format that you need. The rest of the app should concern itself with where the data originates from or in what format it is originally. You should hide away this data preparation in a separate data source class that prepares the data for the app. <clears throat> Since preparing data is a separate concern, put the data source class in a separate data package. In Android Studio, in the project window, right click uh, app Java com example operation, select new package, enter data as the last part of the package name. Right click on the data package and start a new file, enter data source as the name. Okay. So, new package, append data to the ends. And then new class data source. Okay. <clears throat> All right. 
inside the data source class, create a function called load affirmations. The load affirmation functions needs to return a list of affirmations. You do this by creating a list and populating it with affirmations instance for each resource string. Declare list affirmation as the return type of the method load affirmations. <clears throat> Declare list of type affirmation as the return type method of the method load affirmations. Okay, let's see if I can load affirmations is going to be a function with function. And then it says <clears throat> list affirmation is going to be the return type of the method. Okay. Inside the parentheses, read an affirmation passing in research that string to affirmation one as the research will do. Add the remaining affirmation objects. Okay, so we have data source, function load affirmations. Okay, list, it's gonna return a list uh, of type affirmation. Okay, return list of affirmation and then affirmation. Okay. <clears throat> separated by commas. So even though it's a data, it's in the data package, we're not calling it a data class. Okay. All right. Load affirmations. Yeah. Return. Well, hey. Affirmation. Affirmation resource dot string dot affirmation form. Resource dot string dot affirmation six. Okay. 
This is not a string. Dot. Oh, I know. Should we? Seven. We should start string. Uh, eight. Okay. <clears throat> so data source function load affirmations of type list affirmation. So we made a function load affirmations. It returns a list of affirmation. And then this is where we create the list of the affirmations, list of affirmation. So we return it to this list. Okay. And so when this is called a return, it gets this affirmation list, I think. All right. Optional, display the size of the affirmation list in a text view. To verify that you can create a list of affirmation, you can call load affirmation and display the size of the return list in a text view. In the text view, it comes with your empty activity app template. Val text view equals text view equals find view by ID, resource.id. In the main activity, get a reference to the text view. Val text view equals text view equals find view by IT. Okay. Resource.id.text view. Text view dot text equals data source dot load affirmations dot size dot to string. <clears throat> Val text view of type text view equals okay. Oh, the the call. Text view. Good. Oh, there's no ID yet. So I gotta give it an ID. <clears throat> so call it text view now. Text here dot text and text view dot text equals data source load affirmations dot size to string. Yeah. 
Let's see if it works. Yep, ten. Yeah, so it works. All right. Delete the code. You just added a main activity. Okay. <clears throat> no way. In this task, you'll set up the recycler view to display the list of affirmations. There are a number of pieces involved in creating and using recycler view. You can think of them as a division of the labor. The diagram shows an overview, and you will learn about each piece as you implement it. Item, one data item of the list to display represent one affirmation object in your app. Adapter takes data and prepares it for the recycler view to display. View holders, a pool of views for recycler view to use and reuse to display affirmations. Recycler view, view on the screen. So we have the items which in this case are our list of affirmation, I'd, I'd say. <clears throat> and then we have our adapter. The adapter does something with the view holder. The pool of views for the recycler. See so the adapter takes the items and prepares them for the view holder. And the view holder gets the items ready to display on the screen. Okay. Add a recycler view to the layout. The affirmations app consists of a single activity named main activity and its layout file called activity main XML. First, you need to add a recycler view to the layout of main activity. Open main activity XML. If you're not already using it, use the split view. Delete the text view. The current layout uses constraint layout. Constraint layout is ideal and flexible when you want to position multiple child views of the layout. Since your layout um, only has a single child view, recycler view, you can switch 
to a simpler, simple view group called frame layout. This should be used for holding a single child view. In the XML code, replace constraint layout with frame layout. The completed layout should look as below. All right. So let's go to that to the main. Then I can create layout. We'll switch to frame layout. And then delete the text field. All right. Main activity. <clears throat> okay. Switch to the design view in the palette, select containers, and find the recycler view. Drag a recycler view into the layout. If it appears, read the add project dependency pop up and click OK. If the pop up doesn't appear, no action is needed. All right, so uh, we'll go to the design view, take our recycler view, and add it in. Okay. If we go back to the split view, we see matches parents, the recycler view. Wait for Android Studio to finish and the recycler view to appear in the layout. If necessary, change the layout width and layout height attributes of the recycler view to match parent so that the recycler view fills the whole screen. Set the resource ID of recycler view to recycler view. Okay. I give them ID. This whole Recycle our view supports displaying items in different ways, such as a linear list or a grid. And arranging items is handled by a layout manager. The Android framework provides layout managers for basic item layouts. The Affirmations app displays items as vertical lists, so you can use the Linear Layout Manager. Switch back to the code view in the XML. Inside the Recycler view element, add a Linear Layout Manager as the Layout Manager attribute of Recycler view as shown below. Layout Manager equals Linear Layout Manager. Okay. Well, I, I guess, uh, linear layout manager. Okay. Um, to be able to scroll through the vertical list of items that is no longer on the screen, you'll need to add a vertical scroll bar. Inside the recycle of view, add scroll bars vertical. Huh? And the final XML layout should look like the following. Okay. All right. Run your app. The project should compile and run without any issues. However, only a white background is displayed in your app. Let's run it.
I'll wait for the phone to start before we can try to run it. Okay, let's try again. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right, it, it does build just a blank screen, though. Okay. So we'll stop it now. All right. What screen is splitting that because you were missing a crucial piece of code. Right now you have the source of the data and the recycler view added to your layout. The recycler view has no information on how to display the affirmation objects. Implement an adapter for the recycler view. Your app needs a way to take the data from the data source and format it so that each affirmation can be displayed. Um, as an item in the recycler view. Adapter is a design pattern that adapts the data onto into something that can be used by the recycler view. In this case, you need an adapter to take an affirmation instance returned from the list, returned by load affirmations, and turn it into a list item view so that it can be displayed in the recycler list. So the adapter is design is a design pattern that adapts the data into something that can be used by recycler view. Design pattern. In this case, you need an adapter to take an affirmation instance from the list returns by, returned by load affirmations and turn it into a list item view so that it can be displayed in recycler view when you run the app recycler view uses the adapter to figure out how to display your data on the screen recycler view asks the adapter to create a new list item view for the first data item in your list once it has the view it asks the adapter to provide the data to draw the item. This process repeats until a recycler view doesn't need any more views to fill the screen. If only three list item views fit on the screen at once, the recycler view only asks the adapter to prepare those three list item views instead of all 10. In this step, you'll build an adapter, which will adapt an affirmation object instance so that it can be displayed in recycler view. Create the adapter. An adapter has multiple parts, and you'll be writing quite a bit of code that that's more complex than what you've done in this course so far. It's okay if you don't fully understand the details at first. Once you have completed this whole app with the recycler view, you'll be able to better understand how all the parts fit together. You'll also be able to reuse this code as a base for future apps that you create with the recycler view. <clears throat> Create a layout for items. Each item in the recycler view has its own layout for which you define a separate layout file. Since you are only going to display a string, you can use a text view for your item layout. In resources layout, create a new, create a new empty file called list item XML. Open list item XML. Add a text view with an ID item title. Add a text, uh, add content, wrap content for the width and height as shown below. List item XML. Okay. So resources, layouts, view layout, list underscore item. I think they wanted me to call a list item with an underscore. 
list underscore item dot XML. And the roots, I'm going to put a text for you as the root. Okay. All right, so we've got, go to split screen, we've got a text view. It says match parents, but in the directions it said to do wrap contents. Contents. And I said to give it an ID. <clears throat> You want me to call the ID item title. Okay. Alternatively, you could have used file new layout resource, file name list item, text view as the root element, then updated and generated the code to match the code above. Yeah. The kind of a combination of the two. Create an item adapter class. In the Android Studio project pane, right click app Java com app relation, select a new package, enter adapter as the last part of the package name, then right click on the adapter and select a new Catlin flyer. Okay, so I'm going to create an adapter package and then make an adapter class. Item adapter, the last name. So, new package. Okay. And then I'm going to create a new class in the adapter. And they wanted me to call it item adapter. No, we ain't ready. You think it's too early to trip or treat? Okay. Spider donuts, maybe a dunk o' lantern. That's a pretty good thing. Okay. So, we need to add a perimeter. Okay. You need to add a parameter to the constructor of item adapter so that you can pass the list of affirmations into the adapter. Add a parameter to the item adapter constructor that is a val called dataset of type list affirmation. Import affirmation if necessary, since the dataset will only be used within this class, make it private. Okay, private. Val data set of type list affirmation. The item adapter needs information on how to resolve string resources. <clears throat> this and other information about the app is stored in a context object instant that you can pass into an item adapter instance. Add a parameter to the item adapter constructor that is a val called context, okay, of type context. Position it at the, as the first parameter in the constructor. Val 
private val context of type context. How to resolve string resources. This and other information about the app is stored in a context object instance. Okay. So that tells the adapter how to resolve the string resource. Private val context of type context. <clears throat> item class item adapter private val context of type context comma private val data set of type list affirmation okay all right, so we've got our item adapter. Okay. We made our adapter. We made our list item. So we made our item, we made our adapter. Okay. We need our view holder. Create a view holder. Recycler view doesn't interact directly with item views, but it deals with view holders instead. A view holder represents a single list item view in Recycler view, and it can be reused when possible. A view holder instance holds a reference to the individual view within a list item layout. <clears throat> so we have a list item layout. Okay. This makes it easier to update the list item view with new data. View holders also add information that the recycler view uses to efficiently move views around the screen. Inside the item adapter class, before the, clo the closing curly braces for item adapter, create an item view holder class. So our item view holder class is within our item adapter. Okay. <clears throat> All right, item view holder. Defining a class inside of another class is called a nested class. Since item view holder is only used by item adapter, creating it inside item adapter shows this relationship. This is not mandatory, but it helps other developers understand the structure of your program. Add a private val view of type view. as a parameter in the item view holder class constructor. Private val view of type view. Okay. Make the item view holder a subclass of recycler view dot view holder and pass the view parameter into the superclass constructor. Okay, so make it make item view holder 
a subclass of recycler view dot view holder and pass view parameter into the superclass constructor. Recycler view dot view holder. Okay. So we're gonna say basically that item view holder extends cycler view dot view holder and we're gonna pass in view. I believe we're gonna pass in the variable we created. Yeah. Okay. Inside the view holder, define a val property text view that is of type text view. Assign it assign the assign it the view with the ID item title that you defined in your list item XML. I am title. Okay. Text view of type text view. Okay. Uh, I think it's supposed to be item title. Okay. Okay. Override adapter methods. Add the code to extend your item adapter from the abstract class recycler view dot adapter. Specify the item adapter dot item view holder as the view holder type in angle brackets. Add the code to extend your item adapter. Okay. Okay. Override adapter methods. Add the code to extend your item adapter from the abstract class recycler view dot adapter. So I want to say extending some say item adapter extends recycler view dot adapter of type item adapter dot item view holder. Extends Cycler view dot adapter of type item adapter dot item view holder. Okay. That's a little long, so I'm just going to put it on the next line. I don't think I can. Hmm. Okay. You will see an error because you need to implement some abstract methods from recycler view dot adapter. Put your cursor on the item adapter and press command I, control I on the windows. This shows you the list of methods you need to implement. Get item count, 
on create view holder, on bind view holder. Okay. Select all three functions using shift plus click and click OK. So control I. Vendors. So implement all. And then inside item adapter, it's given us these three functions from, I believe, from item adapter, cycler view, that we need to override to get our code to work. Select all three functions using, okay. This creates stubs with the correct parameters for the three methods as shown below. Okay. Override function on create view holder, parent, view grip, view type hint, view holder. Override function get item count, output type int. Override on view on bind view holder. Parameter holder of type item view holder position type hints. Okay. You should see no more errors. Next thing you do need to do is implement those methods so that the they do the correct things for your app. Implement the get item count. The get item count method needs to return the size of your data set. Your data your app's data is the data set property that you are passing into item adapter constructor, and you can get its size with the size. <clears throat> Replace get item count with this. The very function get item count equals data set that size. It's more concise way of writing this. Return data set that size. So, provide function get item count <clears throat> equals data set size that size. Okay. Implement the onCreateViewHolder. The onCreateViewHolder method is called by the layout manager to create new view holders for the recycle view when there are no existing view holders that can be reused. <clears throat> Remember that a view holder represents a single uh, list item view. The onCreateViewHolder method takes two parameters and returns a new view holder. A parent parameter, which is the view group that the new list item view will be attached to as a child. The parent is the recycler view. If you type parameter, which becomes important when there are multiple items, item view types in the same recycler view. And if you have different list item layouts displayed within the recycler view, there are different item view types. You can only recycle views with the same item view type 
in your case, there is only one list item layout and one item view type. So you don't have to worry about this parameter. In the on create view holder method, obtain an instance of a layout inflator from the provided context of the parent. The layout inflator know, knows how to inflate an XML layout into a hierarchy of view objects. Val adapter layout equals layout inflator from parent.context. Okay. Once you have the layout inflator object instance, add a period followed by another method call to inflate the actual list item view. Pass in the XML layout resource ID, resource.layout.list item, and the parent view group. The third Boolean argument is attached to root. This argument needs to be false because the recycler view adds this item to the view hierarchy when it's time. Okay, now the adapter layout holds a reference to the list item view from which we can find later. Child views like the text view in the create view holder return a new item view holder instance for the root. Okay, <clears throat> here's the code for the on create view holder. Create a new view. Now adapter layout equals layout and player dot from parent context dot inflate resource layout dot list item parent false return item view holder. Okay. Okay. Nice. Implement the on bind view holder. The last method you will need to override is the on bind view holder. This method is called by the layout manager in order to replace the contents of the list view. The on bind view holder method has two parameters an item view holder previously created by the on create view holder method and an int that represents the current item position in the list. In this method, you will find the right affirmation object from the data set based on the position. Inside the onBind view holder, create a val item and get the item at the given position in the data set. All right. Val item equals data set position. Okay. Okay. Finally, you need to update all the views referenced by the view holder to reflect the correct data for this item. In this case, there is only one view, text view, within item view holder. Set the text, set the text of text view to display the affirmation string for this item. With an affirmation object instance, you can find the corresponding string resource ID by calling the item dot string resource ID. However, this is an integer and you need to find the mapping to the actual string value. In the Android framework you can get you can call get string with resource ID and it will return a string value associated with it. Get string is a method in the resources class and you can get an instance of resources class through the context. That means you can call the context.resources.getString and pass the string resource to the resulting string and can be set at, as the text of the text view in the holder item view. In short, this line of code updates the view holder to show the affirmation string. Holder.textView.text so holder text view dot text equals context dot resources dot get string item string resource ID. Okay.
The completed on buying view holder method should look like this. Here is the finished adapter code. Now that you've implemented the item adapter, you need to tell the recycler view to use this adapter. Modify the main activity to use the recycler view. To finish, you need to use your data source and item adapter classes to create and display items in the recycler view. You do this in the main activity. Open main activity. In main activity, go to the onCreate method and insert new code to describe the following steps. After the after the call to set content view, create an instance of data source and call load affirmations method on it. Store the returned list of affirmations in a val called my data set. Val my data set data source dot load affirmations. Mm -hmm. Data source dot load affirmations. Huh. All right. My data set. All right. Create a variable called recycler view and use find view by ID to find a reference to the recycler view within the layout. Found recycler view equals find view by ID recycler view. All right. Find view by ID. Huh? <laughs> Tell the recycler view to use the item adapter. class you created. Create a new item adapter instance. We did a, um, you know, item adapter expects two parameters, the context, this, of the activity, and the affirmations in my data set. Recycler view dot adapter equals item adapter this my data set. They would have been inspired on us. Mm. Oh. Item adapter, that's my data set. Huh? Since the layout size of your recycler view is fixed in the activity layout, you can set the has fixed size parameter of recycler view to true. This setting is only needed to improve performance. Use this setting if you know that the change in content do not change the layout size of the recycle view. When you're done, the code should look like this. Recycler view dot set as fixed size.
Okay. Run your app and you should see the list of affirmations. Moment of truth. Look at that. Did you see the list of affirmations? All right. Cool. Congratulations, you just created an app that displays the list of data with the recycler view and a custom adapter. Take some time to look over the code you created and understand how the different pieces work together. This app has all the required pieces to display your affirmations, but it's not quite ready for production. The user interface could use some improvement. In the next code lab, you will improve the code, learn how to add images to the app, and polish the user interface. Here's the solution code. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Next, the summary, okay, recycler view widget helps you display a list of data. Recycler view uses the adapter pattern to adapt the display to the data. View holder creates and holds the views for recycler view. Recycler view comes with a built-in layout manager. Recycler view delegates how items are laid out to the layout manager. <clears throat> to implement the adapter, create a new class for the adapter, for example, item adapter. Create a custom view holder class that represents a single list item view. Extend from recyclerview.viewholder.class. Right. Extend from recyclerview view holder. Modify the item adapter class to extend from recyclerview.adapter class with the custom view holder class. Implement these methods within the adapter, get items count, on create view holder, and on bind view holder. Learn more. Okay. I definitely am going to have to make a video learning some more about this. Um, get the basic idea. I just need to learn more about how the different parts of this interact with each other. All right, so learn more. Create a list with recycler view. Recycler view class, recycler view dot adapter, recycler view dot view holder, recycler view library. Lists enhance your user interface with material card view and images. Done. All right, so that was. Um, Use recycler view to display a scroll over the list. And then, um, so that was use recycler view to display a scroll over the list. Display a list of images using cards. And test list and adapter. All right. So we've got quite a bit more in this section. So we just finished this one and we'll go on to this in the next video. We'll see you there.